Hello and welcome back to A Boring Revolution, your number one news source for everything in regards to The Boring Company. Have been mad busy at work, unable to make any episodes over the last week, but I found some time today. Hopefully this is an interesting episode for you. For me, it was very, very interesting. I've been looking into the development with Proof Rock. Obviously, we've had that picture posted on the Twitter feed of The Boring Company and it is extremely interesting to look at. So, what am I talking about? I'm talking about this picture here, where we've got the machine, Proof Rock, which is being launched at a gradient. No need for launch pits, no need for reception shafts. It is launched at, uh, it looks like a, a, one, a one in eight gradient, around 20 degrees. This is interesting stuff. There are lots and lots of benefits to this. There are unfortunately some disadvantages too, which I will discuss. However, I believe there is a solution to everything. There are ways around uh, these cons, and I will explain to you. Basically, this is a system that has been borrowed from Japan. I don't think they're using the exact system. The, um, the details are fairly thin on the ground here, but it is called Europe, or Europe Ultra Rapid Underpass Method, and it's developed by a company called the Obashi Group in Japan. Now, for them, they were mainly using it for underpasses, so for going under highways and I presume railway lines as well. Uh, so a relatively short distance. In this application, it will be used in a more of a, a long, longer tunnel. Now, obviously, with every change in technology that you do, uh, the, there are definitely advantages to using this system, however, there are various things that will sort of hinder it. But in terms of the advantages, they are huge, yeah, huge. What I will say is there's a lot of things that I thought that were going to implement it into Proof Rock in terms of more power for the machine, uh, a better spoiler removal system, uh, a better segment erection system. But this, for me, was unexpected totally caught me off guard. So by doing away with launch pits and reception shafts, you end up combining ramp and tunnel construction into a single process, which is absolutely perfect for us because we have our pods entering and exiting the system up these ramps. We don't need to bring in separate machinery to build these ramps. We don't need pipe jacking. We don't need separate teams doing separate elements of the job. It's all done in one process. A single process simplification is beautiful. Secondly, more cost effective to build. <clears throat> because we don't need that launch pit, because we don't need that reception shaft, because we don't need all our secant piles, uh, the costs are gonna be considerably lower. Offers considerable time saving. Now really, this should be top of the list because it's all about time for the Boeing company. It's all about maximizing what we can do in any particular year yeah now if we can save time by launching the tbm using some kind of prefabricated launch system like we've seen above you therefore won't need to build uh, a lot of the systems that you would need to launch a traditional tech tbm saving time and thus money as well because you're on site on site less uh, removes the need for secant piles sheet piles and complex wing beams and props as you know that is one of my areas of specialty, a uh, uh, specialty, uh, I spe sorry, <laughs> I, one of the areas I have pre previously specialized in when I've worked in uh, deep excavations, groundworks, and uh, multi-story buildings, uh, sea camp piles, ring beams, props, that sort of thing. That is no longer required. Therefore, I technically don't have the expertise for this particular piece of technology, but it's so simple so perfect for what the Boeing company intends to use it for that, that you just can't overlook that. It, this is exactly what we needed. Allows for, and this is another big one, really big one, allows for muck trucks, trains to convene at the surface. As you know, on the Boeing company's project in Las Vegas, we have this huge crawler crane on site removing muck from the excavation. You potentially could have some kind of... Uh, loading yard on the surface for muck trains where you could stack them up uh, remove it via gantry crane you could save yourself tons of money and more importantly 
tons of time by removing the spoil more time efficiently. Allows for concrete segments to be gravity fed into the tunnels because you're going in at an angle, you load up your trains, again you might have some kind of docking yard there with your precast concrete segments all lined up like we see here at the bottom of the screen, just here, and you have a train that's about 100 to 200 foot long and you just send that down the shaft at a 1 in 10 angle and the gravity will feed it in because it's very heavy, you will not required to use very much electricity and then obviously that train comes back it doesn't have the weight on it so there are some drawbacks yeah a number one or, or one of the drawbacks is obviously this is a new piece of technology so the expertise there to implement it is not quite there but that can be learned relatively quickly over the period of a year so i don't really look at that too uh, in too much detail however settlement could be quite a big problem there's ways around controlling that settlement, so it's not a huge problem, but the major problem with using the system is the high probability that settlement will occur during the first one to 200 meters of launching that TBM, maybe 300 meters, yeah? You're gonna get a lot of soil consolidation. Imagine what the, the soil conditions, the strata at the surface is gonna be like. It's going to be mainly fill material. It's going to be mainly loose material, non-cohesive material. You're going to get a lot of soil consolidation. Yeah? Any kind of weather changes as well, that is instantly going to have an effect. Lots and lots of water is going to cause even more soil consolidation. Um, another possible cause of ground settlement is pressure. If you're using a mixed face machine or a slurry mach uh, type TBM machine, uh, any kind of uh, ex excess pressure in the excavation chamber, that's going to potentially cause a, a breakout and cause you to over excavate. And obviously the machine produces vibrations, uh, it's a huge machine, uh, that potentially again could cause uh, ground settlement consolidation. Um, I am concerned about this, I have had to think about this, I think there are ways around this. One obvious, very, very obvious solution is you grout the area you expect to bore through. And you can do that from the surface. It's not going to be horrendously expensive. It's going to be a lot, lot less expensive than digging a launch pit. Um, but obviously that is some work prior to you uh, launching the TBM. Uh, another potential option is you enclose the area in a trench on the ground maybe using sheet piles, uh, soldier piles, uh, maybe secant piles as well, uh, and you could then control the amount of ground that is uh, has a propensity to suffer soil consolidation. Um, here's some examples of some extreme soil consolidation. Uh, the picture top left and the picture top right is actually on my route into work. This happened uh, about seven years ago, maybe eight years ago. Um, these are mainly caused via sinkholes, to be frank with you. Normal soil consolidation caused by TBMs is not as extreme as this. Maybe the picture top left, it, it's a bit more like that. You know, you, you're talking, you know, five to 18 inches from a typical TBM if you get things quite badly wrong. With modern machines, it's very unlikely that this will happen. However, because you are launching this machine at a gradient and you are not entering um, the shaft at a set uh, a set level where you know what the, uh, the, strata, the strata is good, potentially you open yourself up to some major settlement. Here, so picture this. This is our tunnel. You imagine we're gonna bore our tunnel we want our tunnel to be a perfect circle, yeah? It's not gonna happen. It never ever will happen. Even in the hardest rock, if you had the perfect granite, zero fractures in it, zero voids, you would put a TBM through there, you're still gonna get some uh, soil consolidation, you're still gonna get some slippage, yeah? They might, the slippage might only be two inches, maybe only an inch if you're really lucky, but you're gonna get slippage and consolidation, especially in non-cohesive in soils or strata, um, 
in soft rock, uh, non-cohesive uh, rocks with fractures in it. Here's an example of what potentially could happen. Now this is on a good job. On a good job, very, very little slippage, not great amounts of uh, consolidation. A lot of this can be remedied. You can remedy this by using uh, grout. The grout can be injected at very high pressures behind the shield in various uh, inlets. That can be filled up fairly quickly. You will get some some uh, some consolidation, but it will be almost un unnotable. So, so this is like a good job, yeah? As you can see here, two points of slippage, but that's not no big deal. This, on the other hand, is what happens when you go through a softer rock that maybe has some fractures in it. You get areas that are slipping in, you're over excavating. Uh, the pressure at the front of the machine is causing some forms of slippage together with the instability of the strata that you are boring through. This is bad, but again, it can be, uh, it can be remedied, grouting. Uh, the, the amount of um, consolidation and settlement at the surface is gonna be fairly minimal. If you are more than 30 to 40 foot deep, it's going to be relatively unnoticeable. Maybe in a few, uh, few areas you might see it, but it's not to be worried about. This is potentially what we could ha have occur with our, um, our new system for proof rock. Major, major slippage here at the top. Um, massive amounts of consolidation. If the soil or strata conditions you are, the actual geology you are going through is medium to poor, if you are entering the TBM at an angle like that, at a relatively shallow angle at the surface, wow, really, things could really go pear shaped rather quickly. As you can see here, um, massive amounts of consolidation, we're, we're massively over excavating. Um, we're going to see huge divots at the surface. Uh, we're going to see cracks in, in tarmac, in concrete. Potentially, it could affect buildings that are adjacent to the tunnel. So all this has got to be controlled. Either you've, you've got to build, essentially, a trench at the surface and try and enclose the area where the tunnel is going beneath, uh, or even better, do some very, very heavy uh, amounts of grout. So, so just to explain as well, grout is... Um, Basically, uh, sand cement uh, plasticizer um, water mix. Um, it looks a bit like a very thin gel. Uh, it's injected into the ground at very, very high pressure. We're talking around five to 16 bar pressure into the ground, uh, maybe slightly less than that, five to 12 bar pressure into the ground. Uh, and then it fills up any voids. It also uh, kind of bonds the material together at the layers that you inject it in and prevents most of the slippage and soil consolidation. So major drawbacks are settlement. Any surface settlement induced by the tunnel bowling process and installation of the segmental lining depends on the geological strata. So the composition of the soil or rocks with which you're going through, the height of the tunnel cover, obviously in this method that we're discussing, there is literally no tunnel cover. Really, really low amounts of tunnel cover for long periods of boring. That's dangerous, dangerous conditions. Uh, the excavation diameter, so we're quite lucky we've got a small excavated diameter of 14 foot. And the confinement pressure exerted by the TBM at the face. As you've got a slurry or mixed face machine all that material injected into the front there um, is a large amounts of pressure, which hopefully should stop um, excavated, uh, excess excavated material falling into the actual excavation chamber. However, that's not necessarily what will happen in all soil types, uh, especially if you've got large fractures. Uh, Backfilling via means of pressured grout behind the segment lining will be less effective, especially when you've got uh, less tunnel cover. Uh, mixed face conditions at the tunnel face can cause over excavation, which results in additional ground settlement. And, and obviously, if you have no cover 
and constantly material is falling into that excavation shaft and you're trying to, to, to go forward at a very high rate, you know, 15, 20, 25 metres per day, um, you, you're going to get large amounts of settlement and large amounts of over excavation uh, during the boring process. Summary. So, what do I think overall? Do I like this system? Absolutely. Really like it. I like innovation. I like doing things in a different way if it has, you know, good reasons for doing that. So, uh, for us, this is time, time savings, cost savings, and it, it makes the construction process simpler because we don't need to use any kind of pipe jacking or uh, actual me mechanical means to excavate ramps uh, and elevators. We can just use these as ramps essentially, which is absolutely perfect for us. Um, I think that they should pursue this. I think they, they should really think about potential settlement though, because if this does happen on a live job, and we, we end up with you, you know issues at the surface, that is gonna put a lot of people off from the Boeing company, but there are definitely um, very well-known engineering practices that can be implemented for this that can reduce settlement by large percentages. You know, we can re reduce settlement by 80, 90%, if not more. Thus, uh, the pros of this system vastly outweigh the cons of this system, we should do it absolutely 100%. I fully support the Boeing company. Uh, it, it's totally out of the box thinking and um, definitely a lot of credit to, should go to the Obayashi uh, group who invented this method and hopefully the Boeing company can further improve upon this. Okay, no, that's today's episode. Thank you very, very much for joining me. Um, a lot of interesting things going on. Hopefully should have another video out tomorrow as well. Thank you guys and remember, don't be boring and I will see you very, very soon. Please like and subscribe to the video and join me on Twitter, Discord and Instagram.